Welcome to prayer meeting. Happy Wednesday to everyone that I'm looking at here in the sanctuary and to those who are joining us online. Welcome to prayer meeting. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord again? How many of you are glad to be in your own house but able to join us for prayer meeting once again? Praise the Lord. I agree with you tonight. Thanking God for giving us one more time to come to prayer meeting and to hear a word about Jesus. They kept saying on Sabbath, let's talk about Jesus. So that's what we hope to do tonight. We want to talk about Jesus. We want to hear what Jesus has done for you. And we're going to pray to Jesus. How about that? Amen? Amen. I'm going to open us up to start out with the word of prayer as we do try to start on time at 6.30 and end on time at 7.30. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be able to come to prayer meeting one more time. God, we thank you for giving us the opportunity of prayer. Thank you for those who have prayed for us, Lord. We know somebody prayed for us. Thank you so much, God. If it had not been for you on our side, when men rose up against us, where would we be? We bless you and we invite you into this service, into our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, I want to say welcome to the place where we come to talk to our Father, to the one who we believe hears us, and the one who we believe and we know that he will reward us. Because he said we must first believe when we come to him, we must first believe that he is, right? That he is. And if you are here tonight, I know you believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Praise the Lord. My God, what a mighty God. Well, I want to start out saying that I know God is a good God. I know that God is merciful and just and kind in all his ways. And I know that God goes above and beyond what we ask or even think. So I want to give God the praises tonight. Last Wednesday, I was supposed to speak, but I had an emergency come up. And I think God, Elder Cherry, brought the message last week. Well, tonight we had another elder that was supposed to speak. But he reached out to me two days ago, and I praise the Lord that I'm able to come before you tonight. So our God is a good God. We're going to um, take a few moments now just to share the prayers that God have answered for you. Is there someone that would like to share with us? What is something that we were praying about, or maybe we were not praying about it with you? But you talk to God about it, and you have heard a response on that. Let, let's hear from someone, please. Okay, if we, while you all thinking about it, I have another one. I had asked for prayer for my mother. My mom is 85 years old, and she lives in Florida. And a few weeks ago, I was asking for prayer for her for an issue that seemed to... Um, was trying to overcome her, but I want to say to God be the glory. She sounds better. Every time I talk to her, um, my sister um, took her to the doctor and everything seems to be well. And her 87 year old sister is visiting her right now in Florida. Amen. So I am rejoicing. I just want to thank God that um, he took that prayer and he turned it around and thank you all for your prayers. Who else? Let's hear from someone else. Speak up, please. Well, all my girls are traveling now, and we prayed for traveling mercies, and they all did fine. So that's something recently. I've had lots of times when God has answered me positively, but the most recent one is this one. And Amen. So I have five daughters, and they're all together enjoying themselves. And so I'm thankful for that. 
Amen. She said that she has five daughters and they are all traveling together right now. She prayed for traveling mercies and God is doing that. God is keeping his hand upon and his hedge of protection around her daughters. And we want to thank God for that. And we are going to continue to pray for them on their trip together. Who else want to tell us about what God has done? Well, I'd like to just say that <clears throat> there are always things that you see about yourself and things that you know that you need to kind of sharpen it up and, and make it as it should be. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you, you know, God has his own way of shaping us as the potter does the clay. And so um, I, I didn't want to, to get too um, excited about it, but when people drive a certain way, mm -hmm. it would just make me want to feel, and I did it one time that I was going to, this guy cut in front of me really, really close. And so I had said, you know what, I'm going to get in front of him. And uh, that went on for a little ways until finally something said, now, are you doing that because of what he's doing? Mm -hmm. are, are, are you doing, is that what you're supposed to be doing? And um, I said, probably not. Um, the Lord is so humble in his ways. He went through so much. And so I said to myself, the Lord wants us to realize, and it's not easy, that he was meek and, and wasn't weak. And so I'm, I'm just praying that, that we realize what he went through. And he's the creator of the heavens and the earth, the, the monarch of the universe, mm -hmm. put up with individuals that he was trying to help. And they did not like him, but he still showed love. So... I pray you pray for me that I will allow the Lord to polish me in the way that he sees fit. And through the Holy Spirit, I will develop better. Amen. Was there anyone else that wanted to share a testimony or tell us about a prayer request and how the Lord is moving on that request for you? Is there anyone else? Mm -hmm. Okay, we probably have some that are watching us, and of course, I can't, I cannot hear you or I cannot see what you're, um, what what you're saying. But I thank God for however He's working on that prayer request um, for you. Um, at this time, we are going to entertain some prayer requests right before we get ready to go into um, tonight's lesson. And Elder Cherry already said we are praying and asking God to do the work in us mm -hmm. that needs to be done. We'll continue to pray and ask God um, to do that for us. We also are praying and asking God for traveling mercies for the Page sisters, as well as our pastor and any, any others that we have who may be traveling during this time. Any other request? I, ha I do have a request, and that is one of the uh, individuals that was doing our Bible study um, on a fairly regular basis uh, just called and said, you know, I, I don't want to do it right now anymore. I need, I need time to really mm. think because I just don't feel like God is there for me as he could be. So prayers went up in his behalf, and it's been about a month and a half, Okay, um, almost two months. But we did hear from him. He did call. He did respond to a call. Um, we're not where we want to be, but just pray for him. We his, sure his name is Timothy Wallace. Please pray for him. Okay, let us continue to remember Timothy in our prayers. Any other requests or unspoken? Yes, yes, Elder. One moment, let her give you that so we can hear it better. There you go. I pray for our faithfulness that the Lord will uh, manifest his presence among us as we attempt to deal with issues in a society that is continuing to deteriorate around us at every look and turn and certainly is pressuring each and every one of us to... Mm. Uh, 
to cave in, uh, to uh, allow to ourselves to compromise on our beliefs, because it's very difficult sometimes to maintain one's steadfastness mm -hmm. in prayer, in faithfulness, and in service with, with conditions around you. So I pray for me, my family, and church body, and others who are attempting to deal with these issues on a daily basis, that God will bless us and strengthen us and fortify us, that we can endure to the very end. Amen. And let us continue also to pray for those who are on our sick list, um, even those who are home or out of the hospital. We saw several of our members come back last Sabbath, but we want to continue to pray for them along their healing journey. Let us continue to do that. Okay, at this time, we're going to go ahead and have prayer over these requests. And, and if we did not get your request, know that God knows what your request is, and he knows what is urgent and what is on your heart. Let us bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much once again that we come can come before your throne of grace. We thank you, O oh Lord, for blessing us with this means of communicating with you. Father, we ask it in the name of Jesus that there be nothing between this prayer, between us and you, God, that there be nothing stand between it that prevent it, O oh God, from being worked upon and moved upon by your mighty power. Father, I ask for forgiveness for my sins and my shortcomings. I ask for forgiveness for our church and for us as a body, dear God, asking that you would forgive us, O oh Lord, for our sins and have mercy upon us, God. Have mercy upon us, God. As Elder Page has said, we are faced with temptations daily. We are faced with trials and tribulations, and sometimes it is a struggle, God. So we are asking you to give us the power that we need to hold on and to be faithful unto you. Lord, you have proven yourself. You, you have shown to us that you are God. And beside you, there is no other. We want to worship you. We want to be saved in your kingdom. We want to reflect your character. And we need you in order to be able to do this, oh God. Remember those who are sick and shut in among us. Remember those who are in recovery, those who are in therapy, those who are, are facing new procedures. God, remember those who are trying different medications. Lord, I'm just asking you to touch each and every person with the healing that is needed. Father, remember those who are wayward tonight. Remember those who are weary, dear God, who are weary and not sure where you are. I'm asking that you would show yourself unto them. Hide them under your wings, dear God. Hide them in the cleft of the rock and let them not stray away from thy presence, O oh Lord. Continue to tabernacle with us this night, O oh God. Wake us up where we are asleep and help us to run this race and let it not be in vain. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We thank you for our pastor and his wife and family. We ask you to bless them tonight. We ask you to cover them, oh God, tonight. Father, continue to do the work in them that you have sent them here to do, God. Help them to lead this church, oh God, and for us to be the beacon of hope that you have placed us to be in this neighborhood. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Another night for prayer meeting. We're going to talk tonight, and I'm going to ask you to, to join me in it and, and share your thoughts on it. We're going to look at a story in the book of John, the New Testament. John chapter 5. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and chapter 5. John chapter 5, we're going to talk about acting on belief. Acting on belief or acting upon belief. 
John chapter 5, John chapter 5 is a story about a man healed at the pool of Bethesda. Mm -hmm. John chapter 5, let's look at, um, starting at verse 1. Starting at verse 1, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Verse four, for an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him in verse eight, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately, the man was made well. We're talking about acting on belief. Probably the first year that this man ended up at this pool, and I'm thinking if this was me, and someone asked me, did I believe? Or was I waiting on the troubling, the stirring of the water? I'm sure I would have just rang out a song. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. I'm yet holding on. The second year, had they asked me? Or the third year? Had, had someone come and, and, and stood around me as I, as I lie on the rug and on the mat and wondered, are you still at this pool waiting for the troubling of the water? I'm sure I would have still came up with a song. I may not have sang as loud, but I probably would a moon, a little tune. But let's say 10, 20 years passed by. Now here we are, the 23rd year. And there I lie still at the pool. Am I at, at that time still ready to act on my belief that something is going to happen? Or, or by year number 23 or number 24, am I just lying there because I can't move, I can't get myself out of my situation, but I have just turned off in my mind and I don't believe anymore. I'm trying to imagine this man, according to the word of God, had an infirmity 38 years. And 38 years, lying by the pool among others who were sick and lame and blind and mutilated and mentally disturbed. Among others, for 38 years, the Bible said this pool had 
five porches filled with individuals who were all hoping for a miracle. They were all hoping to be the first person in the water when the water was troubled. As I began to, to, to read this, I just thought maybe, maybe a few things we can look at here at prayer meeting because we are always praying to God for something. There is something that we want to happen. There is a healing that we hope take place in my life. Or there is something that you want God to do for your son or your daughter or your marriage or your job or your house. There is something that every now and then Satan tempts you and wants to know, are you still going to act upon belief? Surely it's been too long. There's no way you still waiting on the troubling of the water. You mean to tell me you are still lying here waiting on a healing? So as I begin to, to look at this story, I, I, I jot it down so much, I can't share it all. I think I'll start with Number one here, it is possible after 38 years to receive a new walk and a new talk. Can I get an amen? amen. Can I get an amen? amen? I say it is possible with God, with God after 38 years for God to fix it. Amen. Somebody need to say amen. We, we read stories where individuals were locked in prison 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and then their service got overturned. Their service got overturned. And when they come out, you always see somebody that say, I never stopped praying for them. They say, I never stopped praying. I knew it was going to happen. I want you to know, um, saints of God, that it is possible for you to have an infirmity for 38 years. You could be in this church and always telling us, I've been in the way 40-something uh, odd years, and uh, Elder uh, uh, T.J. Fountain baptized me 45 years ago. All that could be true, but Elder Vivian also know there could be something you've been struggling with for 38 years. Some taste in your mouth that you've been trying to get rid of for 38 years. Some hatred, some bitterness for something that somebody did to you over 38 years ago. Some untruth, some lie that you put out there that you said 38 years ago that you still have not faced up to and come clean. But the good news is, it is possible That's right. after 38 years That's right. to get a new walk right. and a new talk. Oh, yeah. And I don't know about you, but that's good news to me. That's good news to me because I'm going to tell you a song they used to sing years ago. God's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Do y'all remember that song with the children's choir? God is still working on me. God is always about a new thing. He said in his word, behold, I do a new thing. So he said to the man, take up your bed and walk. And walk. He said to Abraham, get thee out of this land and go to another land. You know, Abraham was 75. He said to Joshua, have not I commanded thee to be strong and of a good courage? God can have a new walk for you, although it's been 38 years. That's what I want you to know. The number of years does not affect God's ability to change your direction. Amen. My God. I'm trying to encourage somebody. The number of years that you have been praying for your spouse, 
for your brother, for your sister. It could have been nine years. It could have been 19 years. It might be 38 years. It's nothing to God. It's nothing to God. All he has to do is speak the word. And when God speak the word, you have to be ready to act upon belief. Act upon belief. God, I believe you. God, you said you would. And God, I believe what you said. And I'm standing on your promises, waiting on you to do it. It is possible. For some things in life, they say 38 years is too late. A lot of times, if you're not married by age 38, people start looking at you strange. Wonder what's wrong with him. Wonder what's wrong with her. She can't get nobody. It's nothing to God. 38 years on the job and they haven't made you the boss. People start looking strange. You been here that long? You've been here that long and this all you do? You still the front cashier? It's nothing for God. It's nothing for God. That's the time limit that we place on ourselves. But I just want us to know that paralysis and infirmity can last 38 years. Get this. Although you might be close to the place of healing. This paralytic was near the pool. He was in the area. He was in the place where healing should be happening. But he wasn't healed. There are individuals that come here week after week after week to the Beacon of Hope Church. They are in the place. They are in the place where it should be happening. But they're not healed. They're still sick. They're still lame. They are still paralyzed, although they are close to the source. This is why Jesus said, let the wheat and the tares grow together. He'll do the separating. If it was up to you and I, we'll tell people to get up. Get up off your mat. Get up off your rug. Get up, get up, get out of here. But you see, they were all in need of a healing. And they all hung around those five porches, waiting for one opportunity. Be because the saying was that after the troubling of the water, the first person in was healed. Just one person was going to get a chance out of hundreds of people lying around. I thank God it's not like that today. I thank God that you and I can be here in the sanctuary together and we can all receive a healing. Amen. All of us. We come week after week close to the pool. Some of us sit close to the pulpit. Close to the musician. Close to the, to the communion table. Hoping and waiting for a healing. I also want to say, most people in the church, let's look at verse three. Verse three, when it talks about the, the individuals lying around the five porches, it says, in these, in these porches, lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed or withered it might say waiting for the moving of the water this is what it said now most people let's go back to it in these days these people to describe all of them were waiting for the moving of the water most people in church that come to church and are near the pool 
They are near the word of God. They are near that person praying who they believe can pray. They come and get near the anointing oil when the pastor has anointing. But this is the word I want you to get. Most people are waiting. That's what they said. Go back and mark that in verse 3. It said, these lay there waiting for the moving of the water. Most of us are waiting. Very few people in church are doing. Very few people are helping I want you to get this very few people are working how many come here Wednesday night after Wednesday after Wednesday after Wednesday to work with Elder Whiteley very few of us are working doing praying very few people in the church who want to be healed are planning and deaconing. You know what most people are doing? Waiting. Everybody is waiting on somebody else to do it. So we're lying around just like the paralytics at the pool. They were waiting for the moving of the water. And then when the water is troubled, everybody wants to be healed. Very few people are cleaning. We shouldn't have to beg and plead when we have a cleaning day. I'm just telling you what God said. Very few, everybody just lying on their mat and on their rug waiting. But very few are trusting and cleaning and coming out to prayer meeting and coming back to AYS and helping and working and believing but everybody is just waiting what would it be like if we say Lord while I wait use me That's right. help me to be singing Sister Tate, thank God for you. While you're waiting, you're still singing. While I'm waiting, I'm still trusting. I'm waiting, God, but I'm still teaching Sabbath school. We should not have to plead and beg with individuals to do in the house of God. But God said too many are using the mat as an excuse and just lying on the mat waiting for the waters to be troubled. And I want you to read this story because it was not the troubled waters that brought about this man's healing. Right. Jesus still had a way to heal him. That's right. That's Jesus has a way to heal you. And you got to be yielding yourself to him while you are waiting. That caught my eye when it said these people lay there waiting for the moving of the water. Because so many times we need things done. And you waiting to see who going to do it. Are you pointing out saying, well, that's who usually do it. Deacon Ron John normally does it. Sister Keela normally does it. No. No. What are you doing? What are you doing? Thou who wants to be healed. Praise the Lord. You see, 
They were waiting. But here's why they were waiting. They were waiting, verse 4 says, for an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. They were waiting for that event to take place because they had either seen that happen before this paralyzed man had either seen someone else go into the water after it was trouble and come up healed, or he had heard that that's what happened. So he was only expecting a healing based on what he saw before or based on what he heard. Okay. The things that you are praying for, because we're in prayer meeting, and the things that we are asking God to do, God is able to do it and to work it out in greater ways than what you have seen Amen. him do in the past and than what you have heard he will do. In other words, the, the, the paralytic's mind could not believe beyond that. For 38 years, he waited, but he waited to see it happen by getting me over into that pool. This is the way it's going to happen. I need somebody to help me get over in there. I need to be the first person to get over in there. And so many times, the things that we are asking God to do, we are trying to put God in a box and tell him, this is how it has to happen. It has to be in this pool, in this water. But God is greater than that. That's what I want you to see tonight. He's greater than that. He's beyond that. All you have to do is believe. Because you won't always know how God is going to do it. So they, they did not believe beyond that. They was not waiting for Jesus to do what they had not seen. Okay, but they were waiting for Jesus to do what they anticipated he could do. So they, they were waiting for a healing, but they thought it had to be related to the pool and the troubling of the water. And what I'm saying tonight is that if you've been praying about something for a while, and you don't see God coming in the way you thought he would come. God is not limited to that. He's not limited to you thinking it's going to happen by the troubling of the water. He goes way above and beyond what we even ask or think. And this is exactly what he did in this man's life. The man did not expect his healing to be any different from other people who had ended up first in the pool but thank god he did it different and like i said before some of you came in it is possible after 38 years to receive a new walk and a new talk jesus does okay this is something that i just said healing can take place outside of the water which means outside of your normal association of how you think Jesus is going to do it. During these years, the invalid pretty much thought that if my time comes, I'm going to be healed through the troubling of the water. Many times, that's how we associate our healing or our answered prayer is going to come through a specific way. Only via the pool. But God can do what he wants to do by whatever means he chooses. Jesus spoke the healing. He did not use the pool at all 
from smelling the water and seeing many people become healed in this same pool year after year, this man thought for sure he would be healed that way. What I want to say to you is let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus speak to you about how you will be healed or about how he's going to do it. Let Jesus lead you. And once he leads you and speak to you, be ready to act upon belief. He says, my ways are not your ways. So don't limit your blessing to the pool. That's what Jesus is saying. I have ways other than the troubling of the water in the pool. Jesus does what the father does. He says, I and my father are one. Jesus was seeking no points. He didn't want no glory after healing the man. As a matter of fact, he left. He, he wanted nothing to do with the glory from the crowd. It was not his desire to be elevated, but to bring about healing. Now, here's another one before I close that caught my attention. In verse 6. When Jesus saw the man lying there, he knew already that this man had been in that condition a long time. I'm telling you, 38 years is a long time. But there are some of us that have been dealing with conditions for 38 years or longer. Jesus sees him. He has compassion on him. And he looks at the man and he says, do you want to be made well? I mean, like, is that a trick question? I mean, like, I've been lying there 38 years. Oozing, it done rained on me, the sun done came, it done weathered on me. All kind of people done tried to lift me up and move me under the porches. 38 years. Everyone know all my business. I'm broke. I don't have no friends. I don't have nothing. And Jesus going to ask me, do I want to be healed? What, what kind of question? You might think that this question is meaningless. You know? All, all this man could see was barriers to his healing. He probably saw just what he told Jesus. I ha Sir, I have nobody here to help me. But Jesus was asking him a question. Do you want to be healed? Amen. So I, I thought about that. Is it possible to be sick with an infirmity, an addiction, a sickness, a stronghold, a illness, for so long and be close to the pool, close to the place of healing and not really want to be healed? Is that possible? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <clears throat> Some individuals have focused so long on the, the malady, on, on the issue, that they are more comfortable holding on to the issue than being healed and cleansed and stripped from the issue so that you can see who they truly are. Kind of like when I was little, we used to watch the Charlie Brown movies, and one of the, the little ones loved their blanket. I think it was Linus. So he took the little blanket around with him everywhere because if you take the blanket away, there goes his security. You will see his insecurities. So Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? It is possible that this man had invested 38 years obsessing on the pool. 
it is possible that you are just obsessed with being married. Or you are just obsessed with being a preacher. I want to be Reverend so-and-so. But Jesus' question is, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be saved? Do you want to take up your bed and walk in the direction that I want you? Or are you focused on the pool? We can invest 38 years in just being ordained. I want to be ordained. I want to be ordained. And so you're checking off all the blocks. I want to be a master guide. I want to be the main master guide of Allegheny West Conference. So Jesus said, do you want to be healed? Or do you want to be the master guide? Because you can be all that without Jesus. Without Jesus. So I believe that's why he said to the man, am I your ultimate goal? Do you want to be made well? I pray that that's our goal. I pray that we're not just coming to church. This is the place where sick people come. This is like a hospital. So we're in the right place when we come here under all these different porches with our mats and our rugs because we are sick and we are in need of a healer. But I pray that we are not just here investing so much in, in, in just the pool and the troubling of the water and investing so much in a, a, a vegan diet and investing so much in raising the most money for the bye-bye mortgage. I pray that your desire and mine is that I want to be made whole, Jesus. I want to be made whole. And however you have to do it, Jesus, even though in my mind I may be thinking it has to come by this way, A, B, C, or D. We have to get to where we say, Lord, you have, you have your way. Have your way because you know the best way to heal me. Make Jesus your ultimate goal. Because he is the one that heals this man when we get to the end. The man answers, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. He didn't realize there's no power in the water. You remember when Naaman, when Naaman had to dip seven times, there's no power in the water, Naaman. The same thing with this. There was no power in the water. The power comes when we do what God says to do. Okay. When Naaman dipped seven times, then he was healed because that was the word. And that's where the power comes from us when we do what God say do. We can't keep waiting on men and we can't keep giving the excuse that I have nobody to put me in. I have nobody to go with me. I'm waiting until my friends join. I'm waiting until my uncle join. I'm waiting until the boss gives me the day off. I have no man. The power comes from doing what God say do. There's no power in the troubling of the water. And this guy didn't know that. That's why he said, sir, I don't have nobody to put me in. But praise God, Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well. He took up his bed and he walked. Desire of Ages, page 203, tells us Jesus had given this man, the lame man, no assurance of divine help. Mm -mm. 
the man might have stopped to doubt and lost his one chance of healing if he had doubted. But he believed Christ's word when he told him to take up your bed and walk. And in acting upon it, he received strength. That is so my prayer tonight that we would receive the word from God, that we would act upon it Amen. and receive the strength that he wants to give us. His healing, the way that he's going to make, it might not always come from the direction that we think. Even after 38 years, even if you have been praying for a long time, stay alert. Amen. Keep your ears open to hear that still small voice behind you when it say, hey, take up your bed and walk. Do you want to be healed? Is there anybody here tonight other than me would like to be made whole? God, I'd like to be made whole. God, I admit we do have infirmities that we have been struggling with a long time. And we have prayers, God, that we've asked you to take care of for a long time. But God, help us to hold on and to do it your way. Let us not be weary in well-doing. And while we are waiting, we want to be doing, we want to be coming to church, we want to be cleaning, we want to be planning, we want to be helping around here, we want to be a part of those who are getting ready to meet Jesus. We want to be proclaiming who he is. So that when he come, he doesn't just find us lying around waiting on somebody else to do it. Let us bow our heads. Dear God, thank you so much, Lord. We thank you for the story you have shared with us in your word tonight about the man who had a paralysis issue for 38 long years. God, you know, year after year after year, prayer after prayer after prayer, you heard him, God. You saw his heart, and you also saw the way that he thought you were going to come through. Lord, we're so glad that you are much better than that, that you are greater than that, that you are not limited to our means, dear God, that you are not tied down to how we feel you ought to do it, but you have over a thousand ways in which to bless us. So God, I pray that you will help us. Help us, dear God, in our weakened conditions. Your words say you are touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Oh, Father God, help us, I pray. Deliver us, I pray, from those things that try to turn us against you. And Lord, help us as a waiting church. You've seen how most of us come and we're just waiting, God. We're just waiting on the healing, but we're not doing anything else. Forgive us, Lord. Help us to be a people that while we await, that we are doing, that we are serving, that we are praying, that we are cleaning, that we are decorating, that we are feeling this church, that we are proclaiming. Let us continue to be about your business, God. And when we look up one day, we will realize that you have healed us. Thank you, God. Lo, we are ready, Father. And we ask that you would come again for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We look forward to seeing you all on Sabbath morning. Sabbath school at 9.45 a.m. and divine worship at 11 o'clock a.m. God bless you.
Thank you.